So wow, big packed room. I feel flattered. Uh, thank you all for joining me this uh, morning still. Uh, I'll try not to, uh, to keep you too long. I realize lunch is next. Uh, but my name is Bruce Broadbent, and I'm the gaming lead for uh, Google in EMEA. And I'm going to talk to you today about how developers can increase revenue uh, while keeping games free to play. So what I want to do is talk about some numbers from 2014 uh, in relation to free to play, the market, what we see as Google. Talk, to, uh, talk about some of the challenges that you face as game developers in generating revenue from free to play games or gaming in general and some of the enhancements over the last 12 to 18 months that uh, we've been working on, which helps you make more money from your games. Right. So over the last 12 months, I would say that um, there's been a shift in gaming behavior. So gamers, uh, particularly on mobile, vote with their thumbs, and uh, invariably, they favor free-to-play games. We now see 91% of downloads are free, of all downloads. Uh, and with that, revenue has shifted. So the revenue models that, uh, that are predominant within uh, the gaming sphere for generating most of the revenue that we see in play are from in-app purchase. And that means that developers have shifted the way in which they think about how they monetize their games. And there's also been another shift with developers, and they're less focused on in-stores and moving more towards uh, the lifetime value of users. So they're looking at how can they not only get users to install the game, but how can they get them to play and continue to play them. So the, the official app download figure for 2014 across all platforms was 132 billion. And to give you an idea, last year it was around a billion. So that's a you 30% know, 30, 30 increase year on year. And time spent in mobile apps is 85%. There seems to be an app for everything now. So you can use an app to book a taxi, an app to talk to your friends, play music, watch videos. It's a lot more time is spent in apps. And that seems to be the preferred um, method of engagement within mobile devices. And app it, revenue was 25 billion in 2014, which I think was up 7 billion from the year before in 2013, and is predicted to grow between 5 and 6 billion again next year. So huge amounts of downloads, um, huge engagement within mobile devices in apps, and lots of money being paid out to app developers. So you could argue that there's never been a better time to build apps, right? But there are some challenges. And those challenges are around discovery, engagement, and monetization. So getting your app in front of people, getting it discovered, getting them to use it and continue to use it, and then how do you monetize those users? So the reason there are a challenge is, number one, there's more than a million apps in each app store. Uh, and I'm talking about Apple App Store and Google Play Store. And 60% of those apps have never, have never been downloaded, which is just uh, a phenomenal amount to me. And then if your app does get downloaded, uh, well, it is found, 80% and downloaded, 80% of apps are abandoned within one month. And 20% of apps are used only once. So it's installed, used once, never used again. So. It's very difficult to get your app found, and once it is found, it's very difficult to keep people using it. And then it's difficult to monetize. So 76% of app store revenue is from in-app purchase, but only about 4% of users of an app actually make in-app purchases. Uh, some app developers are reporting high numbers, six to 10, but I think that's probably the top three. And then if we look at the mid to long tail, they're probably looking at somewhere around three to four. Sorry about that. 
So just to reiterate, it's hard to get your app found. If it is found, it's hard to keep users using it. And then if they are using it, it's hard to get everybody to, to pay for it. So what are we doing to try and, try and help you guys solve this problem? So there are a number of different platforms that Google has for gaming developers. And these platforms center around four themes. How we help you um, build your game, so from cloud-based services to Android to Google Play services. How you can grow your audience, so various different ad products, obviously. Um, there's analytics tools enabling you to understand um, where those audiences are coming from. How to understand and engage with your users, so Play services again. Um, there's YouTube, there's the Play Store. And then we have some products around monetization. But the biggest change over the last 12 months is the fact that we've started to integrate some of these platforms now. And through integration, we're able to do some new things around not only getting your app discovered, but also engaging with your users and uh, allowing you to try different ways in which you can monetize those users. So I'm going to talk a little bit more detail about that. So first of all, discovery. So discovery is about finding the right users and, and trying to find the most valuable users, the right users who are going to make you uh, revenue. So uh, we're, we're Google. We've got lots of different platforms. Um, and I'll say over the last 18 months, we have enabled you to um, advertise your app to other app users, wherever they might be within the Google ecosystem. So if they're on their mobile and they're using search, You've got click to install app adverts there. You can do the same on YouTube. You can do the same when they're in a different app and just when they're generally search, surfing the web. But what we, would, what we have now is we have the ability to cross promote and use house ads within your app. So say you've got one successful app, it's got quite a good, good big user base and you want to try and cross promote that to other apps. We now give you the ability to do that within the Admo platform create your own ad, cross-promote your apps, and uh, that's you know, no charge, it's just part of the platform. You could also use this to cross-promote other things. You might want to try and sell merchandise or any other products and services. And we've now integrated Google Play data with Google Analytics and in AdMob. So within one single platform, if you're using AdMob, you're able to see your play traffic sources, and you're then able to see how many people go to your app page within the store, how many people then click to download that, and then how many people convert into actual users of your app. So this allows you to understand which channels are working on your user acquisition for you. OK, so let's talk about some real use cases. Uh, so Game of War, Machine Zone, they wanted to uh, try and find more valuable users. So not only acquire users, get them to install, but which users are actually going to monetize and provide lifetime value. So they ran a campaign and they actually found that YouTube was one of the most successful channels for them. And YouTube is a great channel because not only can you create uh, a channel for your game in which you can upload demos and get users to upload um, how well they've done on certain levels or their high scores. This can be a way you, you can generate viral traffic and activity by other players promoting the game to maybe their friends or just other users of YouTube. They then see that, oh, this looks like a good game. I'm going to download it and install it. But you can also run an advertising campaign itself where you click to install the game from YouTube. Um, you can choose to advertise that game against other games of similar um, genre. And uh, in this case, for Game of War, they found that the users that uh, they acquired via the YouTube channel were of a 15% higher value than any other. So let's look at engagement. So around engagement, we're looking at how can we get people to install your app and then use it and continue to use it over a long period of time, um, even, even daily, multiple sessions. So there's a couple of things that we've, we've built, and, uh, and there's a couple of things that we're going to continue to develop on as well. So within Google Analytics, again, which integrates into AdMob, we have now got um, a retention rate analysis tool. So you can look at what are your retention rates within that and uh, look at who's still using the, the game after one, two, three months. So but not only have we we've built this, uh, the tool to let you see this, we've actually then enabled you to make this data actionable. So you can say, right, I want to look at this group here in month three 
Um, for February, there's 55% of my users to use my game, but I want to target the other 44% who aren't using the game, and I want to use re-engagement ads to do that. So I'm going to run a campaign, and I'm going to set that campaign across um, Google. It's going to be only in mobile apps. And wherever I see that group of users across the mobile internet, I'm going to show them uh, the ad for the app that they've already installed. And rather than a click to install ad, it will be a click to play ad. So getting users back into the game. So Space Age um, uses with uh, Samurai Siege. They released the game with us in uh, 2013, and um, from a very short period of time, only 14 months, they managed to, to generate um, with Google Play a $25 million run rate. And they did this by increasing the lifetime value of their players by using re-engagement ads um, and creating events to get users to come back and participate in various events over a uh, period of time. So let's look at the third thing, monetize. What are we doing to monetize? Help you drive revenue from every user of your game. So I've talked about this already. So AdMob is integrated with Google Analytics and this allows a few new things to, to happen within how you treat monetization of your users. So AdMob, for, you, for those of you who don't know, is our demand um, advertising platform and Google Analytics is a free analytics suite that we offer to game developers. And through that integration, now we, um, sorry, I won't move on to that yet. So through this integration, you are able to create audiences by monitoring the behavior of users of your game. And these audiences can be used in several ways. So one is you'll have a very, an audience of in-app purchase players. And these, these are your high value, four to maybe 6% of your users who are making in-app purchases and generating revenue. So that's all great. So what we want to do is we want to try and make more money for them, possibly. So there might be some offers, or you might have a group of users who get stuck on a certain level. And uh, these are paying users, so you're going to offer a one-time offer booster to get them past level 10. And you can create an ad using the ad functionality that I showed earlier within AdMob, and you can show that ad only to that group of users. So then that way you can try and increase the native in-app purchase mechanics that you've already built into the game. The second thing you can do is you can create a, a cohort or group of users who you know are never going to pay. They've been playing the game for a while. They like playing the game, but they take a bit of pride in the fact that they haven't had to make an in-app purchase. For them, it's a self-achievement self that they've managed to level up to where they've got to and they've not had to spend any money on any boosters or lights. So that way, so that group of users, you can say, right, I'm going to show you ads. You're going to see, you're going to see ads because I need to get the value from all of my users. And only this group of users is going to be shown ads from Google. And the group of users who make in-app purchases will still not be shown ads. In addition to that, you could have an offer for a no ad experience in the game. So all those users who are used to playing the game and not seeing ads, suddenly they see ads. And you say, well, if you don't want to see ads, then you can just make this small 69p payment for a no ad funded game. You probably won't get many people taking up that offer, but you certainly will reduce the negative reviews that you get around having ads because the user will have made that choice. No, actually, I like, I like the fact that it's free and I'm prepared to, prepared to see some ads as part of that value exchange. And if you're going to show ads, then I'm not talking about banner ads. I'm talking about interstitial ads. So we've developed interstitial ads with ad in AdMob. It's the, the platform or the format that we promote strongly moving forward. And within this interstitial ad uh, format, we have the ability to show true view video ads. So these are the same skippable ads that you see on YouTube. You watch it for five seconds. You decide whether you want to continue watching it. Uh, if you don't want to watch it, you can skip it. We pay a developer for every single ad, whether it's skipped or not. Uh, and then there are interstitial ads as well, which are just the sort of static, flat interstitial ads. These generate seven times the click-through rate of banners, so advertisers love it. And it generates uh, 10 times the revenue that uh, ban traditional banner ha ads have uh, generated. 
And the amount of money that we're paying out to developers has also changed over the last 12 months. So with these new formats that have come into play and the amount of uh, interest that we've had from moving advertisers from the YouTube format into this mobile world, we've seen that we were able to deliver much higher CPMs for our developers. And we've paid out $1 billion to developers in the last two years. To give you an idea about how that equates up to in-app purchase, I think we've paid um, $5 billion through in-app purchase to developers this year. So just a bit about AdMob, we think it's uh, a great platform. We've got 650 uh, app developers with their apps using the platform. It is the biggest in the world in terms of uh, number of devices, uh, number of advertisers who, have, uh, who are buying campaigns across it. We work with several different um, large developers and I'll talk to you about why some of those developers are working with us. So, Sega worked with us and what they wanted to do with us was they wanted to monetize uh, in a variety of different countries. Now, one of the things that um, in-app purchase doesn't offer you is the ability to, to monetize in countries where credit card penetration is very low. So say somewhere like Indonesia where it's two or three percent. The ability for you to make in-app purchase as a revenue stream is severely diminished. You're in 0.0, .0 percentage numbers and actually the best way in which you can extract value from your users in those countries is through ads. And then back, Backflip, they changed their mind on ads. So originally they went with a, a no ad supported model and then they realized that ads was actually a viable solution for them moving forward. So I just want to finish on this last case study which is from Game Basics. And it's a really good example of how they're using everything that I've talked about in a, in a way to generate revenue from their users. So 75% of their revenue comes from in-app purchase. That's great. They also use ads to help drive in-app purchase with a zero ad funded, um, sorry, zero in-ad experience within the game. And then for all the users that decide they want ads, then they show them ads, obviously. So 75% of revenue is IP and 25% is, is ads, which is kind of one of the really, really good case studies that we have. That's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, uh, Bruce. Um, I'm sure there are some, some questions here um, in the audience, so we'll come around with a microphone. Um, uh, feel free to raise your hands. Okay, that's, I'm going to take that mic. Um, I have a question because uh, last year our Google account manager told us that AdMob will no longer support it by Google and we should use edX change, edX instead. So can you clarify that a bit? So your Google account manager told you that AdMob was... Was um, no longer, or, or will, no, will be no longer supported in a couple of months, probably. That's not true. And it's not true. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry Great. you said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, over here, I'll take that. Hi, I think you said uh, you paid out two billion to app developers in the last with AdMob in the last two years. Yes, is that right? Can in you share ad revenue? Yeah, can you share with us how what percentage of that went to games, game apps, roughly? So the majority of um, advertising in game in sorry in apps is is game. I don't know what the exact percentages are, but it's certainly over fifty percent. Um, and the, the amount of revenue that uh, is made in the Play Store is also huge percentage of it is from game as well. So when for, for Google, when we talk about apps, we, we really think games. Any other questions? I mean, I, th I thought it was especially insightful to have a kind of cohort analysis in there. And if you do that in combination with advertising, etc., that's where you can actually get some real, real power out of it. So I've been waiting for that for a long time. I'm happy to see it. And that is finally there. That's uh, really great. I think it gives a lot of opportunity to experiment uh, a bit more with how to show the right experience to the right user, how to monetize actually the ones that you want to monetize through ads, how to uh, offer them the right thing and maybe a as you showed in the, in the last um, uh, example to, to basically give people the choice of okay, 
you want to see ads, but then you have to live with it, or you have to pay a little bit of money, and then it's going to be ads free, which is always it's almost like opting in for ads in a way. Um, and yeah, that's a that's generally a good experience for for a user. Any other questions? I guess you're all hungry, right? So um, thank you very much, uh, Bruce Broadbent from, uh, from Google. Um, he's around. If you have questions, you can certainly also um, ask him uh, um, outside. Otherwise, have a great lunch.